In my first Beyonce video on this channel, I talked about reinvention, how Beyonce was able to reinvent herself from a career slump. We have seen many artists use the trope and emerge as icons, setting up themselves for a long career path. Now just because I reinvent myself, it means I am now elevated to icon status and my name will go down in history. No. We have also seen artists reinvent themselves and nothing happens. Reinvention is not the only ingredient in the sauce of attaining a long-lasting career. Beyonce released her first solo studio album 19 years ago, Dangerously in Love. The formula and rollout was traditional, and what I mean when I say traditional is the composition of the songs and how those songs sounded. There wasn't a lot to decipher. There were good songs, ready for radio. Now I'm not saying the album is basic, but they took the creativity and pushed the envelope as far as the industry and the times would let them, and I think that is smart business-wise. And it was her first solo album, so pacing is everything. In air quotations, the traditional formula continued until Beyonce's fourth studio album in my opinion. The songstress, the type of artist Beyonce represented, was starting to get played out in the late 2000s, early 2010s. Unless you're Adele. Hello. Singers like Rihanna and Lady Gaga really helped to shape what music would become for females in the later years, especially Rihanna, who made music about having an edgy aesthetic and music being a vibe, and not so much about being the supreme vocalist. Now this might upset some of y'all, but I believe Rihanna influenced Beyonce to some degree. Yes, Beyonce influenced Rihanna, but I think Beyonce took a page out of Rihanna's playbook when it comes down to how Beyonce downplayed a lot of the things she used to do back in the early 2000s. As I said, Rihanna has helped to shape the industry when it comes to how female artists navigate the game, and there is no doubt in my mind, Beyonce paid attention. And there is nothing wrong with that. I see music. It's more than just what I hear. With Beyonce, the singer's eponymous fifth studio album released in 2013, we got a different Beyonce. One that I like to call mixtape Beyonce because of how sonically abstract the album is. The singer was reborn with self-titled. Beyonce was now a voice in the political sphere as she was declared a feminist, and she did not hold back as she told her haters to bow down, which caused outrage from some fans and media outlets. With self-titled, Beyonce started the act of preservation in her career, in other words, the maintenance of her legacy. It's great to focus on making hits with each album and playing the singles game, but it's not going to preserve your career in the long run. There will be another hit maker ready to take your spot. Female pop was changing and Beyonce had to occupy a lane that hasn't been claimed yet. In this new music era, it's become a singles game. Music listeners of the 70s to, I don't know, early 2000s are not the same as today's listeners. Albums were fading and she had an issue with this. It's a tough time and it's tough for the music industry. People don't make albums anymore. They don't make albums. They just try to sell a bunch of little quick singles and they burn out and they put out a new one. And they Beyonce wanted to make the album the spectacle it once was, and she did just that. Beyonce became the queen of the album, the surprise digital drop, dropping the album with its visuals with no promotion prior, triggering fanfare, forcing all of us to listen and experience the album in its entirety at the same time, and how Beyonce wanted you to consume the album. Then two years later, Lemonade was released, which written Beyonce in history as a social figure in pop culture. Lemonade sparked conversations regarding the black experience in the United States and sparked many deep dives and courses in some universities. In her August 2021 Harper Bazaar cover story, Beyonce revealed that she had been working on her seventh studio album for over a year, stating that, 
With all the isolation and injustice over the past year, I think we all are ready to escape, travel, love, and laugh again. I feel a renaissance emerging, and I want to be a part of nurturing that escape in any way possible. Renaissance is the first part of a three-act project Beyonce recorded over the past three years. During the the album is dedicated to her husband Jay-Z, her children, Blue, Sir, and Rumi Carter, and her late gay cousin Johnny, Sheehan Solange referred to as Uncle Johnny. Two days before the scheduled release, on July 27, the album arrived in retailers in France and eventually leaked on the internet. But everywhere else, fans paid it dust and waited for the official release date, July 29, 2022. Beyonce continues to impress with the release of Renaissance. The album's sound and overall theme of the underground ballroom scene house and groovy disco shows us Beyonce is not afraid to take more obscure sonics and bring them to the mainstream. The album is like a house party and Beyonce is the DJ, taking requests without dropping a single beat. Now on my initial listen, I was not a fan. The only song that I liked was Heated. On the first few days listening to the album, it sounded like the songs were all over the place and I saw a lot of people saying that on Twitter as well. The way how it was mixed, like a DJ mix, really threw me off, but the more I listened, that aspect became one of my favorite parts about the album. It really ties the songs together in a format that I haven't heard in a while. It was really unexpected sound, and it took me a while to get the album. It's an album the occasional Beyonce listener won't get right away, especially if you weren't familiar with the ballroom scene, because at first I was like, what the hell is this? But now, Beyonce has me in a chokehold since July. And um, we haven't gotten any visuals. Yet. The opener, I'm That Girl, is one of the most interesting sounding tracks on the album. The song samples Still Pimping by hip hop pioneer Tommy Wright III, featuring Mac T Dog and Princess Loco. There's something hypnotic about Princess Loco's voice being played at a sped up rate, and this B's sound vibrating in the background mixed with Beyonce exuding dominance with pure grimy braggadocio. Plastic Off the Sofa really brought us back to Dangerously in Love, it's pure soul, and I do see a lot of people saying it reminds them of Solange, but I'd say it's a nod to old school artists like Al Green. He did. Energy, which really grew on me over time. Leo's groove, all up in your mind. I feel like the visuals are about to be sick for that song. When she finally released it, America Has a Problem is a banger and Move, featuring Grace Jones and my baby Timbs. The only track I have a problem with is Church Girl. I did like it at first, but once you dissect the song, I started to hate it. A lot of us fans love to hype up our favorite artists and make them appear as the ultimate artists. Artists that could have never fallen off. Contrary to what we think, a lot of our faves could have indeed fallen off easily. And Beyonce is no exception when you really think about it. If you are still saying, well, how does Renaissance preserve her career? Well, it coincides perfectly with the times. She could have made a heavy, deep, introspective album that could be coined career-defining, but that might have had her fanbase feeling mixed. Look at Kendrick Lamar's latest project. People do not want to hear that right now. With Renaissance, Beyonce has once again shifted with the times and produced a body of work that people can relate to and want. She has planned and maneuvered the industry terrains and made her album the soundtrack of an unforgettable period in time. And that, my friends, is Beyonce's best career decision. Tell me what you think about Beyonce's album Renaissance. Do you think it's a step in the right direction? And what do you think is Beyonce's best career decision? And like this video if you would like to see more Beyonce videos. I am Don, your pop culture boy, and I will see you in the next one. Four.